So I've officially been a programmer for 10 years. I've been programming for a decade. Yeah, decade. Oh, sounds so long. So I thought I'd uh, make a video about it for myself uh, to document the process or, uh, you know, like a timeline for myself and to show off a little. I don't know exactly the proportions between those two. I would say 60% uh, to show off and 40% to just document it for myself. Maybe I can go back to this video at some time in the future. You never know. So this was my first job in 2014. I started programming officially in 2014. Before that, there was a nine month or eight month stint where I was doing JavaScript, uh, cross-platform mobile development. I don't consider that as having added anything to my life, really. It was uh, just a mistake. But uh, I eventually became a native Android developer in 2014 for this company. They still exist. This is a hardware guitar tuner. So the company here made this hardware right here. Uh, this is the new version. And uh, what it does is that you place it on the pegs of a guitar and you play a sound and the mobile phone picks up the sound and sends it to the device and the device knows how to rotate and all of that stuff. So this is the one I'm most proud of, honestly, in all my career. And this is the one I talk about first in interviews. This part I didn't make. This is the intro. This part I did. So this one listens to your voice and tries to figure out the pitch. And uh, yeah, that's what it does. So if you go like, uh, so that's an A sharp. All right. So that's what it does. So if you connect here, Rode 1, yeah, this is the device I built it for, the first one. Yeah, this is the part I made. So it has a sidebar, reference pitch, there's different, I, it's audio stuff. I'm not really uh, very, very good at that. I was back then, but uh, it even has tutorial mode where you enable it and uh, something happens here. You can add your electric guitar, six strings, let's say, uh, name. Okay, allow, and then this would uh, have a view where it would fade everything except what I want you to look at, and thereby it is a uh, tutorial. Calibrate. You need the device, obviously, for this stuff. Uh, all of this doesn't work without the device, and ha here it has another sidebar where you could create a custom tuning, and this device would know how to turn depending on which note you'd like to uh, tune against. You can create a custom tuning here. You can uh, reorder these things if I remember correctly. Yeah, these are the... Yeah, so that's that's what it does. This was my first app ever, 2014. I did this by myself. They made uh, their own iOS uh, uh, application and I had to basically uh, copy the design. Yeah, it was, it was really good actually. And still is. The company still exists. They're still operating based off of this uh, foundation, I would say. I even got uh, some compliments about it from uh, the owners about how uh, easy it was to uh, integrate uh, new stuff into this. But here it was just XML and uh, there was no design patterns. I had not known anything of that before, what design patterns were. So you can expect to see like everything in one file, activities that are a thousand lines long. Yeah, this was uh, really where I cut my teeth, I would say. I learned a lot about uh, low level code, uh, interfacing with the hardware element. There was this instruction set that you had to know, bits and stuff. I didn't really uh, remember much of it after, but uh, when I was uh, being exposed to it, I, I did the best I could. So that was the first one. The second job I had, I believe it was 2015. I worked for this company and I had to, this is an ERP system that they made. It's huge. And so I had to make it a mobile app and they had the design and everything. And uh, yeah, it was the least interesting, I would say out of, no, this was not the least interesting. They're still worse uh, than this. Uh, which will come up next. But this was one of the least interesting projects I worked on. It took really nothing to do, but it was just a lot of... Uh, I, I don't think I did a very good job here because it wasn't interesting to me. When I'm not interested, you're not going to see very good work come out of me. I cannot force it. 
you, it's going to show in my work, I don't like what I'm doing, right? I'm that kind of person. So this was actually just four months. Along with this, I also made an Uber clone, also never saw the light of day, that app, but it, would, it behaved just like Uber. You would have cars on the map, you would order, it's, it's an Uber clone, exactly. They wanted an Uber clone and they just changed some of the design to make it look like it was theirs. So that was this company, only in four months, all of that. And also I was the only Android developer there. The company after that, I would say also 2016 or late 2016 was GlobeMed. This is an insurance company here in Lebanon. Uh, and I made this app for them also all by myself. There was another Android, uh, there was another iOS developer doing the iOS all by himself. It was just two of us. Uh, and a back-end developer and a designer and all of that. A whole team just to do this thing. I never liked the design. I didn't like the idea. I hated this app. This was the least interesting application I ever worked on. But I, I think I did a good job at it, uh, considering I had, what, uh, two years of experience. I didn't have any design patterns here, and I turned everything to MVP. Everything became a presenter. Yeah, I implemented MVP for the first time here because I had just started with Rakesh doing the refactoring. That's where I first heard of design patterns and all of that. Uh, so I just ran and implemented everything uh, in my day job. Nine months? No, this was year and nine months I spent here. So I'm guessing 2018 I land here. And this is uh, one of the better apps that I've made. I'm proud of this one. Uh, even uh, we hired another Android developer to help me. I was solo on this one as well for a long time, for a year. I built this entire thing by myself, all of it. The stuff you see, they seems they have not changed anything about it. Uh, is it uh, loaded on this? Oh, this is GlobeMed, but, but they need a sign in here, so whatever. So I didn't uh, want to do that. Is it still here? It's still here, yeah. So this doesn't load, okay, car valuation. So this is a car marketplace for Dubai. Uh, you could uh, sell and buy used uh, cars. So you would select the brand, the model, sub-model, something. And you would have these things. People who like cars, uh, apparently they use this stuff. So this was not very interesting on the term, uh, on the aspect of, of what the project did. But it was interesting on uh, the challenge of how to do it. Because you had this, uh, you know, lists of lists, right? This list is similar to, uh, well, Hot Deals is not loading. If it were, you would see just more lists. Classic cars, not loading. Great deals, not loading. Okay, I don't think it's been uh, taken care of much. But yet, here's another list, right? So how to load all of these lists in a way... Uh, where you don't repeat yourself again with infinite adapters. Uh, Compose was not uh, there yet at this time, but Kotlin was. So all of this is in Kotlin. So the developer we got uh, around a year and something, he was so much better than I was, and he taught me a lot. He was not much of a nice person, though, so the learning process was uh, arduous, to say the least. Eventually he quit. This was where I first heard of code reviews and how uh, someone may criticize your code and say, hey, why did you do that? Why did you do that? And you feel uh, bad about it. This is where I learned uh, what, how, how to code review properly without uh, interfering with feelings. He did some part of it, not very big part of it, but he didn't last a long... Uh, oh, this part he did for sure. This I remember, the cost breakdown. And some other part. But he didn't last long enough to do something uh, significant. But he would have if, if he were, uh, if he stayed. He was very good. Very good. Yeah, I don't know where he is now. Don't care either. <laughs> Here I stayed three years and nine months, maybe. I stayed a long time here. At some point here, there was not much else to do, really. Because I had finished everything. And even the developer that joined said, you did this all by yourself, man? I said, yeah. So, so from the outside, it seemed like, yeah, I did this all by myself. But from inside, it needed a lot of refactoring. So you can't get everything right. After that, I landed uh, with a temporary job before I moved here to the Netherlands. 
I landed with a temporary job with a company that is now closed. I found out uh, today, actually, I want to go around uh, looking for the company. So this was one of them. They made a uh, pet collar. So it's a hardware device again, and it's for pets. You would put it on your pet and you would have a geofence in the app and they could never go outside that geofence because it would buzz and do things like that. This was already pre-made. There was another Android developer I knew on it. Um, here, I guess I learned how Americans work, <laughs> I guess, but not much else. Uh, Android code was uh, in terrible state. Uh, it was uh, not very good. After that, I moved here to Holland and uh, I worked at uh, TicketSwap for about a year and a half. I worked on this app. There were five other Android developers. I never thought it needed that much. I never agreed with that part. Everybody knows TicketSwap probably. But it's very big here in Holland. What did I learn here? I learned a lot here. So the lead uh, developer above me was much, much better than me, even better than the other guy at Seas uh, who was better than me. This guy was better by a bigger margin even. So I learned a lot from him, but this, this guy was nice. He was a nice guy. So I learned more with him, a lot more confidence, especially the feedback he gave me before I left uh, was that uh, I'm always uh, looking to find the right solution and I often do land upon it. It's just that I overthink things sometime. And I found that really insightful and really helpful to hear. This was a very good learning experience for me, this company, because I also learned how to work with teams who are, uh, what, 10, 11 members large. You got uh, two developers, iOS, two backenders, two Androiders, project manager, engineering manager, tester, designer. You had to deal with all these people and communicate and get your idea across without sounding like you. But it's a great company anyway, I think. And now, 2023, yes, I joined. I stayed with TicketSwap about 1.x years. Now I joined this company, which I really enjoy the most out of all the other companies, because this has everything. This is apps and hardware, because hardware was really a very memorable you know, kind of experience that I got with Rodi, the very first company I joined, the company that I mentioned today, even in interviews, the first thing I mentioned is Rodi. This is what I'm most proud of. This is what taught me the most. So these guys, I also mentioned it to them. And on that basis, I got more chops during the interview than probably others who were interviewing as well, because I had this experience up my, uh, up my, uh, you know, <laughs> Yeah, so this is apps and hardware. This is a screen mirroring app. So they uh, mirror the contents of your phone to the TV. So we got a lot of TVs <laughs> at work and uh, every TV is different and you have to know the communication between each one of them and how they work. And here I also learned so many things about, uh, you know, not stressing over code quality in the sense that I would halt things or take too long to find some solution. If it's working and it's decent and you've handled the obvious edge cases, you know, you got an app that's working, push it out there. When the users request something or find that something's uh, not what they want or something like that, then you change, you know, it's like a boosted MVP or a MVP on steroids, you know, not exactly waiting a year to finish uh, development, but you know, taking enough time, decent time, good enough time to have something running and not failing. And that's good enough for the public and people pay for this, you know. I also, same company, I made this one. This one was pre-made, so I wasn't the only person. I'm not still the only Android developer here. There's another Android developer who's really good. Yeah, and the communication here between the the, the phone and the TV is where it lies at. There's a lot of uh, underlying stuff that's happening that you could learn from how they built it, how easy they built it, how they maintain it. It's a lot of C code. It's a lot of low level stuff that I have no idea about, but being even exposed to such code like around you lessens the fear of it the next time you see it, if nothing else. So with the same company, I uh, made this one by myself. This one was by myself. This one was not. This was pre-made. 
but each of these applications has a backend kind of. So this backend is the code that talks to the TV and that stuff is pretty hardcore. So that's not buildable by yourself. Supposing that this stuff exists for this one as well, you can build the UI, yes, alone. What else is there? There's another big app that I need to work on for this company as well. And this is bigger than both of these. This would be the biggest one I've ever worked on. So yeah, that's, uh, that's my whole experience for 10 years. Besides the stuff I worked on on the side, of course. What have I got to show for it? Well, I honestly consider myself to be an Android master. Not anything less than that. That's one. Other languages, yeah, not much. I, the way the, the things transpired, I've never needed to branch out into anything else, except for this last job where I uh, left TicketSwap and stayed without a job for about four months before I found these new guys. And in that period, I said, okay, I'll learn DevOps. I should uh, start carving out a new path for myself. I'm still doing that. But uh, other than that, I haven't had to branch out into anything weird or uh, I've just always been finding more Android work. And I've just always been, you know, stepping up, stepping up, stepping up. I've never had to go reach out into something else or be someone else or learn something else that's uh, going to cause a career change. This career change that I uh, decided on from mobile development to DevOps, this I decided myself. I didn't, I wasn't forced to uh, do this. I was still applying as an Android developer, so I'm still, I'm still on that path, but I've decided to, you know, carve out a new one just in case, you know, something happens or I stop liking Android or Android dies. You never know what, what might happen. Plus 10 years, you know, you, you should you should know a couple of things, you know, a couple of things, minimum two, right? When you say a couple of things, you say one, two, three, four, a minimum two, you know, I know just one. I don't like that. So I'm not going to change it. Do I still like what I do? Yes, of course. I love it. I love what I do. Why? Because it challenges me. I get bored easily. Personally, I get bored easily. This challenges me all the time. There's never a point where I'm yeah, writing code as if yeah, it's nothing. No, you need to think about it every time. Every time it's challenging. It doesn't stop being challenging. Even when it's very, uh, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? And it pays for my lifestyle. It allows me to live the way I live. It pays, it helps me support my family. What, what is there not to love? You know, it allows me to live the way I do. It is a tool, of course, for me to live the way I do. It's not the causer of this uh, blessing, but it is a means through which this blessing is delivered to me, my job. So it would uh, behoove you to respect it and uh, like it minimum, appreciate it, which I do a lot. I'm always going to be a programmer, I think, in some way, shape, form, whether it's programming, uh, you know, infrastructure, for a server or programming mobile apps, I'm, I've completely settled into my software engineer persona. I don't have any doubts on whether what I'm doing is worth it or should I be doing something else. I don't think like that anymore because I stopped thinking like that. There's no really something that triggered it to be solved or anything. I just don't think like that anymore, <laughs> literally. You know, I stopped thinking like that. If I start thinking like that again, I'll, I'll start feeling like that. But I don't, so I don't. And that was it. Tell me in the comments, write this huge paragraph of what, you, what your experience is. I'll read it all. <laughs> I'm not going to read anything. All right, see you in the next one.